Hey, thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. I'm Derek Whitmore, and I'm going to share with you my five thoughts from Thursday's Twins win against the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Kenneth Vargas started the show for the Twins in the second inning. He hit a two-run home run that sailed out in a hurry. He was batting right-handed. Now, most of Vargas's power in the majors so far has come from the left side of the plate. Uh, Thursday's was... Vargas' 10th home run, eight of those have come batting left-handed. But lately, it's really looked to me like he's clicking on the right side of the plate. I asked him after the game if, if that was the case, if maybe his swing was feeling better. He says he's got a lot of confidence from that side, and lately anyway, he's been seeing the ball better from that side of the plate. So it's a good sign for the Twins um, if they can count on Vargas in that DH spot to really hit from both sides, so there's not a liability when there's a right-handed or left-handed pitcher on the mound. It would be good to be able to balance out that lineup, and if Vargas can provide power from both sides against pitchers of both-handedness, that's a good sign. He showed that on Thursday anyways. Uh, moving on to Vargas almost had a couple of other, or he did have a couple other RBI chances. He almost drove in a couple more runs. My second thought is that Vargas's day could have been an awful lot bigger if not for two missed opportunities. Uh, Lorenzo Cain took a ball away from him. His runners on first and second with one out. Vargas again from the right side against the lefty, Jason Vargas. Not to confuse the two. Uh, Kenny's Vargas drove a ball to the left center field gap that I thought for sure would fall for extra bases. Score at least the run from second base, possibly the run from first base. Lorenzo Cain went and made a spectacular catch. Check out my five thoughts column posted on 1500ESPN.com. I shared the video from that. Um, the catch might not look all that spectacular. At the finish, Cain basically just kind of reaches over across his body, catches the ball, and then sprawls out. It's almost like an after-the-fact dive. But when you watch the second and third replay of it, where they show how much ground Cain covered... It's a tremendous catch, and live from the press box, I thought there was not a chance that Kane was going to catch that ball. Uh, the Royals basically showed all series that they're a team that can cover some ground in the outfield. Took some sure base hits away from Twins and turned from Twins hitters and turned them into outs. Um, that's the value of having an outfield defense, and I think that was really on display this series. Thought number three is another missed opportunity for Kenny's. Not to pick on him because he did have a good game. Uh, the home run was big. But missed opportunity came in. Let's see, I want to make sure I get the sequencing correct for you. In the fourth inning, Twins had the bases loaded. Joe Maurer drives an RBI single. Shane Robinson scored. So they still have the bases loaded. Nobody out. Brian Dozier and Kenny's Vargas and Trevor Plouffe coming to the plate. Only Trevor Plouffe never got to the plate. Dozier lined out to the third baseman on a hard-hit shot. And then Kenny's Vargas tapped out kind of weakly back to the pitcher, pitcher to the catcher for one, catcher to first base for two. That was a one, two, three double play to end the inning and really kind of took the wind out of the sails from the Twins at that point in the game. Of course, it didn't kill them because they ended up winning the game eight to five. But Vargas's day could have been a lot bigger than it already was had he been able to capitalize on either of those two opportunities. Thought number four, Joe Maurer had a half day off on a day game after a night game. The Twins won Wednesday night, 3-1, to one, and they played Thursday afternoon. That meant Vargas was playing the field. He's not used to that. He's typically been the team's DH this season, but he does have a little bit of positional flexibility. He can play first base. To my eyes, he's still a very unfinished product in the field. Um, I'm not sure the Twins would want to count on him long-term at first base if they had to, but Joe Mowers really looked pretty good in the field to me in the early parts of this season and in spring training down in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, so he'll obviously be their first baseman going forward, but Kenny's spelled Maurer on Thursday, so Maurer could, I guess, rest his legs a little bit because you do notice, and players do talk about uh, noticing anyways, a difference between DHing rather than playing the field. They really feel like it helps keep their legs a little bit fresher. So. Maurer got that day today on, again, the day game after the night game. We'll watch how Paul Molitor treats Joe Maurer in some of these games back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, a day game following a night game, doubleheaders, things like that. I'm curious to see how they treat Joe Maurer going forward as, frankly, let's face it, he begins to age. Thought number five, after a day, a, a day after hitting a big home run against 
the Royals on Wednesday night. Oswaldo Arcia was benched. That's because there was a lefty starting on the mound. I mentioned Jason Vargas on the hill for the Royals. Paul Molitor thought it was best to sit Arcia despite his game-winning two-run home run just about 12 hours uh, previously. Um, I asked Molitor about that decision, and it does make a ton of sense. His explanation is logical. He says that they want him to have more consistent at-bats against left-handers, and he's not doing that. Sometimes he's throwing away at-bats. So they want him to just have more consistency overall. Mahler said he thinks the best way to do that for now is to have Arcia only face right-handed pitchers and not face lefties. So they're protecting him a little bit against the hand he struggles against more. Arcia in his career has been much better against righties than he has lefties, so it makes sense to hold him out. But you're nervous that that thing, you know, maybe the Twins started to think that uh, Arcia is a part-time player. Nope, that's not the case. I asked is this something that you're going to try to protect him from for the rest of the season as the 23-year-old kind of still gets accustomed to major league pitching? Forget how young this guy is sometimes. Mahler said, no, definitely not. In fact, the Indians are scheduled to pitch TJ House on Sunday, lefty. That would give the Twins an opportunity to throw Arcia in the lineup against the left-handed pitcher if they so choose. Be curious to see how they treat that this weekend, but Paul Molitor made clear that it's very short-term decision to protect Arcia against lefties. We'll see how they treat it going forward. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for coming to 1500ESPN.com. Check out the website on our Twins page, though. I've got several more stories posted on the Sports Wire. Most important, probably, Ricky Nolasco's timetable from his return. I'll tell you about his bullpen schedule this weekend and the first day he'd be eligible to return. Will he make it back from the disabled list in time? That remains to be seen. But that story is on the website, so you can find that, 1500ESPN.com, along with all the rest of our Twins coverage, these videos, the Touch Em All podcast, and plenty more. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Derek Wetmore. I'll catch you this weekend.